camera lists mean different things to different people. For a production house or firm like Netflix or the BBC, they're a way to ensure that the content that they're paying for is shot with the gear that meets their quality standards. For professional cinematographers, it's just part and parcel of doing the job. And for the fanboys out there, it's yet another thing to argue over pointlessly on the internet. However, any way you cut it, they're a thing. And recently, the list that most people talk about is Netflix's. What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. Canon's R5C took a while to be approved by Netflix, over a year and a few firmware revisions in fact. But starting with firmware version 1.0.3, the R5C has been approved for use as a main camera in a Netflix 4K original production. Now of course, what does this, what this means for you will of course depend. For the vast majority of us, the odds are we're not shooting Netflix originals, and so this means basically nothing. So why am I talking about it then at all? Well, one of the standout features of Netflix approved camera list is that they provide some basic configuration settings and procedures that can be used as a starting point by any user for developing their own personal configuration standards. And presumably, they've done the testing to determine that these settings meet their image quality and post-production standards, which in theory means they should be good enough for the rest of us, right? So that's what we're going to start looking at in this video. Just what are Netflix's recommendations and how to set up your camera to actually use them. However, this is just the beginning, as I'm going to be using this as a springboard to dive deeply into the performance of not only the R5C, but its sibling, the R5, as well, as well as going to dig really deep into the details on compression methods, log curves, color spaces, and so on. But first, let's start with Netflix's configuration requirements and how to get your camera set up with them. Now, Netflix's guide starts with resolution, sensor mode, and compression settings, and so that's where we will start as well. For the R5C, Netflix preferred sensor modes are either full frame or super, super 35. Now, that's not unsurprising to see, since Super 16 is not included in 4K productions, because in Super 16 mode, the R5C doesn't achieve 4K resolution the best being only 3K when shooting in RAW. Now, Netflix lists the sensor dimensions as 36 by 19 for full frame and 24.7 by 13 millimeters for Super 35. And these are the sensor dimensions if you are using the DCI aspect ratio of 17 by 9. However, if you choose to shoot in the 16 by 9 aspect UHD format, the sensors will crop, uh, the sensor camera will crop the edges of the active area and the actual areas will be 33.9 by 19 millimeters and 23.2 by 13 millimeters for full frame and Super 35 formats respectively. Now, while this is a minor difference, it does matter if you are calculating angles of view for a given lens. Now, of course, the R5C downsamples from the full sensor resolution, that is 8K in the case of full frame or 5.7K in the case of Super 35 mode, in both of these modes when shooting at 60 frames per second or slower. However, at frame rates above 60 frames per second, the camera is required to line skip and therefore 120 frame per second or a maximum of 120 frame per second shooting at 4K resolution is only available in full frame mode. So to set the sensor mode, we have two choices, the camera menus or the direct touch interface. For the menu system, head over to the recording media setup one menu page and look for the sensor mode setting second down from the top. In the direct touch interface, start by tapping the direct touch control virtual button on the bottom left corner of the LCD, then the recording settings virtual button in the top left corner, and then the sensor mode is the top left most virtual button on the first page of that recording settings menu. Next up is the recording format. Next, Netflix only specifies using XFABC on the R5C. RAW is not a recommendation or if you could say permitted at all. 
Now, like the previous settings, the recording format can be set in either the system menus or through the direct touch interface. In the menus, you'll find the setting on the recording media setup one menu page under the main rec format entry. If you're using the direct touch interface, again, we're going to that recording settings touch menu, only this time we swipe over to the second settings page and look for the main rec format button at the top of the left column. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering why not raw? After all, if you believe the marketing and the popular or the conventional wisdom, raw is supposed to be the best of the best formats that the camera offers. Well, I have some theories about this, but the, uh, and this is one of the biggest questions that we will be looking into in future videos. Now that said, this is one place where you may absolutely want to deviate from Netflix's standards if you're not shooting for Netflix. If you're a YouTuber, you might not want to use XFAVC, HEVC instead choosing HEVC. While XFAVC uses a much higher bitrate than HEVC does, the codec AVC is less efficient than HEVC. Now, there is a lot of nuance and detail to consider here, but shooting in HEVC mode can provide a significant space savings for similar or potentially only slightly worse capture side image quality. At the same time, still being significantly better than the quality that you're going to get in YouTube's final deliverable. Now, that said, there is a lot more to talk about here as well, but we're going to save that for a future video. Now, the final aspect of the shooting mode settings is the resolution and bitrate. Now, of course, this is a Netflix production, uh, 4K production approved camera list and guide. So obviously 4K is what they're going to require. However, they do so allow for both DCI and UHD formats in their approvals or whatever. So as long as you're shooting uh, in 10 bit with intra frame compression and 422 chroma samples, subsampling, well, that is what Netflix recommends. Now, as with the previous two settings, the resolution and bitrate can be set through both the camera menus as well as the direct touch control system. In the menus, you will find them on the recording media setup one page under the main resolution bitrate entry. If you're working through the direct touch menu, this is going to be found on the second page of the system settings menu, that button at the top. Uh, we're looking for the bottom left of the main resolution or the bottom left column. It'll have the main resolution slash bitrate tag. Now, of course, Netflix is going to say use 4K resolutions because again, we are talking about a 4K production guide. However, if you're not shooting for Netflix, my recommendation is to go with what makes the most sense for you. Now, this very well might be 4K, but it might as well or might well be something else. So for example, I shoot all of these videos in 1080p as it saves a ton of space and it still looks fine for the use case of a talking head and some camera menus and in the vast majority of viewing situations, whether it's a TV or a smartphone. That said, I will step up to 4K or even 8K when the circumstances warrant. For instance, almost anything I shoot in the field where I won't be able to reshoot it at some point in the future, yeah, I'm going to shoot that at 4K or maybe even 8K, even if that's not how I intend to release it. Now, as for the intra-frame versus inter-frame compression debate or choice, well, that's also not as cut and dry as it was in the past as well. Improvements in computer hardware, hardware accelerated decoding and so forth have removed many of the performance issues with inter-frame or long GOP files. Moreover, modern NLEs are perfectly capable of making frame accurate cuts, even when that cut falls in the middle of a group of pictures or an inter-frame compressed sequence. It's not like every frame has to stand on its own for you to accurately cut there. The short of it here is simple shoot what makes sense for your application. Now, next up, we have the gamma slash log encoding settings. And Netflix recommends shooting in Canon's log three gamma curve with the Canon Cinema Gamut for your color primaries. Now, this corresponds to the built-in custom picture number two profile on the camera. 
Now, changing this again can be done either through the menus or the direct touch interface. Through the menus, well, you go to the custom picture menu setting, select the select CP file entry, and then select C2 Canon Log 3 from that list. Now, from the direct touch interface, you'll find this on the second page of the system settings in the top position on the rightmost or right hand column. Tap again the select CP file virtual button and then select C2 Canon Log 3. Now, when it comes to gamma curves and color spaces and log curves, there is actually a lot to unpack here. This is certainly a safe setting to use if you want to work on a log curve in the camera. Now that said, if you're not shooting for Netflix and you want to reduce your editing overhead, it might actually be a better choice to choose one of the BT709 standards instead. For example, either C1 BT709 YDR or C5 BT709 standard. Uh, the difference to these is how much dynamic range they will encode. Now again, we'll look at the complexities of these curves and all of this log stuff in a future video, as well as talk about how to create your own custom pictures look or picture setting file as well. Now, the final thing that Netflix calls out is auto black balance or ABB as it is noted in the camera. Now, oddly, auto black balance is not actually automatic. It's a manual process that you have to trigger to recalibrate the camera's black balance. Now, Netflix recommends running this process at the start of every day or any time there is a dramatic change in the camera's temperature. Now, the auto black balance process itself is pretty simple and only takes a few moments, at least normally. You'll find the setting to trigger this at the top of the camera setup six menu page as just labeled a, B, B. Now the process is this. First, you will cover your lens with a lens cap, or if you follow Canon's directions directly, you will remove the lens and attach a body cap to the camera. Either way, no light must reach the sensor. Then you jump into the menus and head over to the camera setup six page and select the ABB entry. This, uh, the camera will prompt you to have an attached body cap, which you should have already done. So just select OK. The camera will then take a few seconds to adjust its black levels. Now, if for some reason you got into this and you don't want to deal with it, you can hit cancel to back out of that menu. Now, if you were coming to the R5C from Canon's other mirrorless cameras, or really even any other consumer mirrorless camera in general, my bet is this one's going to be new to you. It certainly has been new to me. And honestly, it's one of those daily maintenance things that I generally ignore, even though I probably shouldn't. And this is something that I also plan to dig on into to just see how much of a difference it actually makes in practice. So that's what you need to know to set up your Netflix or your R5C following Netflix's approved camera configuration. Now that said, I think it's really important to understand that unless you're shooting with for Netflix on an original production, these may not be the best settings for you. So with all of that said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you'd like to directly support this channel and future content like this, please consider hitting that thanks button if you can or buying yourself something you've always wanted from an affiliate link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.